Quality control and improvement, module five, lecture one, control charts for variables. Language objectives for lecture one are to explain the statistical basis for control charts for variables. Reading assignment is chapter six in uh, the Montgomery book, pages 235 to 253. I will add here, here that uh, Montgomery it takes a very uh, high level, uh, detailed view of this and uh, you know, for a first time through this as an introductory course, I'm going to kind of uh, lighten up on some things and uh, give you the basic uh, feeling for uh, for how to do uh, uh, control charts. Uh, so we're not going to cover everything in this particular chapter. There's a wealth of information. I mean, Montgomery sort of wrote the, uh, the encyclopedia on, on the on the subject, uh, but in my opinion, is is too detailed for. Uh, a first-time analysis through it. It's, it's a very good book to use as a reference book, um, but it's hard to get through in uh, the limited time period that, that we have to cover it in this particular class. Uh, but we'll do a good job, and, and uh, you'll, you'll have a good feeling for how to apply this in, uh, in your own situation. And uh, uh, honestly, there's, there's, uh, uh, you, could take, you could get a whole uh, uh, major in this specific topic of, topic of control charts. Uh, but um, we'll go through it, and uh, I'll show you plenty of examples. And uh, in the case studies, you'll you'll learn how to apply these rules. So first of all, as I mentioned in the last last uh, uh, lectures, uh, no two objects can be manufactured exactly the same. Uh, uh, you know, and this is not only search for for manufacture process, but in any process at all. I don't, you know, if you're uh, if you have a, a recipe for cookies, for example. Uh, uh, you know, they're not, each time you make cookies, they're not going to be exactly the same because uh, some of the ingredients may be slightly different, uh, the temperatures may be slightly different, uh, the quality of the the uh, the cook the flour, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, if analyzed on enough detail level, uh, you can spot uh, 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 variation, uh, and, and variation is, is normal, it's natural. Every every process has has variation. Uh, the variation can be quite large and noticeable, or it can be very small. Uh, you know, it, even though all items may appear to be identical, uh, with enough pre precision instruments, uh, you, can, you can tell the difference. So here again, what we're trying to figure out, we're trying to determine the difference between uh, natural variation and variation due to assignable causes. Uh, so there's a lot of cause, things that can cause uh, variation, of course, equipment. Uh, you can have a piece of equipment that needs maintenance, uh, that needs uh, a part part that's st starting to wear out that can cause variation. Uh, you can have differences in source material for, for uh, uh, you know, for what the product you're actually manufacturing. For example, if you're building uh, picnic tables out of out of cedar, uh, the cedar wood itself can have have variations. You can have environmental effects. Uh, machines can perform differently in the summertime and differently in the winter. Uh, and obviously a, a, a factor as well as people. Uh, people get tired. People, people, uh, uh, unfortunately, they go out and drink at night and they come in uh, not 100%. <laughs> and uh, uh, they don't exactly uh, uh, operate the machines uh, uh, perfectly every time. Uh, they're normal. They're, they're, they're human. They're people. Uh, so that can cause variation as well. So all these kind of things we have to kind of take into account. So one method uh, that we use to uh, analyze this variation is, is the control charts. Uh, these can be used to measure any characteristic of a product, such as the weight of a cereal box, uh, number of chocolates in a box, uh, the number of defects in a product. Uh, these different characteristics that can be measured by control charts can be divided into two broad categories. One is what's known as variables, which uh, will take variable control charts, which we'll take a look at in this particular chat, uh, module. And the second type of uh, control charts are, are known as attribute control charts, and we'll take a look at that in the next module. So a control chart for variables is used to monitor the characteristics that can be measured uh, and have a continuum of values, which means that they, they have a, a, they're not discrete. They, they, they have a decimal point, for example. Uh, one way I like to think about these things as well is that a variables control chart measures things that have units. So, for example, a length is so many meters, so many inches. A weight is so much, so many pounds, or so many kilograms, uh, etc. Control chart for attributes is used to monitor characteristics that have discrete values. 
that can be counted. Uh, these typically don't have don't have uh, units attached with them. For example, uh, the number of cookie, broken cookies in a box, the number of dents in a car, uh, you know, the, a light bulb it either works or it doesn't work. So it's it's, it's a yes or a no that, that kind of thing. Uh, all these kind of things are what's known as attributes. So this particular module will be taking a look at what's known as variable control charge. And again, these plot continuous measurement data, such as length, mass, pressure, in a time-ordered sequence. Uh, there are two main types of variable control charge. Data for collect that are collected in subgroups, which we'll, we'll discuss primarily, and charge for individual measurements. Now, in this particular uh, module, we're only going to look at data sets collected in subgroups, because that's the most uh, useful type, in my opinion, and the, and the one you encounter most. The one we're going to look at is uh, what's known as the X bar uh, R control chart. It has two parts. The first part is what's known as the X bar. Now here, I, uh, I could put it the bar over the X, but sometimes you'll see this written as X bar. Uh, this is a uh, mean control chart because it's uh, X bar is a, is a, is a mean, va mean value. Uh, it's used to monitor changes in the mean of a process or the average of the process. And there's basically two methods to determine the control limits on the on the control chart. Uh, if we know what the uh, population uh, standard deviation is, then we can use the following sets of three equations to get the, the uh, upper control limit, the uh, center line, and the lower control limit. Now, X bar bar is, is simply the, the mean of the means. Uh, and uh, sigma here is the standard deviation. N is the number of samples. Now, we typically do not know what the population uh, standard deviation is because uh, we're sampling f from uh, uh, you know an infinite kind of set. Every day we're going to sample. We're, we're going to sample, so we don't know what exactly. Like we make a hundred chairs, for example. We're making you know maybe ten chairs at a time. We're not. We don't really know what the overall population standard deviation is. So typically, when we apply this in manufacturing or in in any kind of service industry, we're going to use the the left hand columns where we, we, we use what's known as the range method. Uh, X bar bar is still the, the average of the averages. Uh, A2 we get out of a table and I'll show you how to I'll show you how to do that as well. And R is R bar is the is the range. And um, I'll show you how to calculate this in an example. Uh, so UCL is the upper control limit, uh, LCL is the lower control limit, and CL is the center line basically of the of, of the chart. The range chart is calculated uh, Similarly, but the range chart monitors the, the dispersion, or uh, a more familiar term is what's known as the variability of a process. Uh, and here, I give the, uh, the formula for the upper control limit, the control limit, and the lower control limit. And D3 and D4, we get out of a table again, and uh, uh, our book has an appendix that has the table in it. In fact, here's, here's the table. These are the, the, we can look here, you know, basically to determine those constants, uh, we have, we look and, and on the left-hand column, we figure out how many samples we have. So, for example, if we if we have a a a process where we're again let's let's go back to making cookies uh, here, and we we uh, we have an assembly line making cookies, and let's say uh, at noon we take we take 10, 10 cookies from the production line, uh, that would be our sample here. And then we would come over here uh, to the to the right. We follow to the right, and we would get the factors for the uh, uh, the constants, you know, the D, the D2 and D3, and and uh, and that sort of sort of constants right off of this chart. And again, I'll show you how to do this in, a, in, a, in an example later. But I did want to point out point it out that these constants come come from a table in the back of the book. So the standard one we're going to apply is what's known as the X bar and the R control charge, and we we use them together. So here's here's some examples where we have some data, and uh, the first sample we plot. The mean, and then we plot the the, the sample sample range, uh, and then each each time we make a sample, we we plot we plot those on the chart, and we connect those charts uh, with a dot. Uh, X bar bar is the average of the averages. Uh, now this chart was generated in uh, in Minitab, and so it'll do all the all the stuff for you. All you have to do is enter the the data, uh, sort of like enter it in an in Excel spreadsheet kind of kind of format, and it'll calculate the upper and lower control limits, and it'll it'll uh, uh, it'll it'll 
uh, do a lot of the heavy heavy lifting for us. So again, how do we apply these now? So we we we've, we have our data. We we went to Minitab. We plotted an X bar and R uh, chart. We want to plot them together. Uh, how do we interpret this? Well, first thing we look at is the R chart, uh, the range chart, because if it's out of control, then the process variation is out of control. Uh, the next step would be to investigate the cause of this problem, because again, if if, if uh, the R chart's out of control, well, you can stop there. It's uh, uh, your process is out of control, and so you have to go back and try to figure out what the cause is. And we can use, uh, you know, cause and effect diagram. Uh, uh, fishbone diagram, all the kind of stuff, uh, basic tools back from, from the last module. Um, if the R chart is in control, then we can interpret the X bar chart. If it is out of control, then the, the process average is out of control. Now, if both of them are, are in control, well, then, then we're fine. The process is in control. We always look at the R chart first, and then we look at the, at the X bar chart second. <clears throat> now, I came up with this, this analogy that might hopefully uh, kind of help to, to figure out how this stuff works. Uh, it, you know, so let's say we're, we're making uh, a Thanksgiving turkey and uh, we're preparing it in the oven and the uh, instructions say to bake it at 350 degrees. Uh, well, what kind of things can go wrong? Well, one thing, one thing that can go wrong is that, uh, so this is, you know, the average temperature during cooking could, could be 250 degrees. It's supposed to be 350 degrees, but if it's baked at 250 degrees, uh, well, then that's a problem. And so this is sort of like the average, right? I mean, so an oven, we set it at 350, but it actually is, is you know, maybe it's three, four, maybe it gets to 351 and it, and it kicks off the, the the oven heaters and it goes back down to 349 and kicks it back on. But the, the, the oven's not going to stay at 350 uh, perfectly for the entire time you're cooking a turkey. It's, it's going to vary. It's going to, it's going to, sometimes it'll be high, slightly higher than, than 350. Other times it'll be slightly cooler than 350, but on average we say, you know, hey, it's gonna it's gonna hover around 350. Well, one area you could have here is that is that you think you set it at 350 and it's really cooking at two at 250, right? That's one kind of problem you could have here, and that's that's sort of a problem with the uh, the average, right? So instead of hovering around 350, it's hovering around 250. That's a problem with the average temperature being wrong. On the other hand, you, you could have you could have wild fluctuations, right? So uh, you know, instead of being, uh, it could go down to 200 and then kick on the heaters and heat back up to 500 and kick off the heaters. So it's a wide swing of of of, of uh, uh, cycling temperatures. Uh, but on average, maybe it stays around 350. But either way, uh, you wouldn't want either one of these kind of these kind of problems. Either way, uh, the turkey is not going to be properly cooked in the oven, right? So uh, so here, you know, the first case, the inaccurate average temperature, uh, so, so if it was cooking at 250 instead of 350, the X bar chart would catch that. Uh, so if, you, if, for example, we had a, a thermometer inside of our turkey and every, every, you know, every 30 minutes we went and looked at the, at the thermometer and we wrote that number down, right, exactly what it was cooking at, if we averaged all, you know, that X, so we plotted it on the X bar, X bar chart, that would that would vary up and down. We would see that variation on the X bar chart. That's how we would detect that something's wrong. Now the wide swings, you know, where it dipped down to 200 and then up to 500, that's going to be caught on our R chart, um, our range chart, because that that again, the range chart, you know, which you take the the, the biggest number subtract it from the smallest number, that difference is what we're going to plot. So that that's going to detect it on that range chart. So by plotting the X bar chart and the R chart together, uh, you know that that's going to that's going to uh, fix the problem. We're going to determine if we have a problem uh, doing doing that. So this is what this is what uh, we do in the in the real world. We go out and just say, you know, here's a, here's a a, uh, a uh, situation where we're uh, we're measuring the hardness uh, of automobile tires. There's a little a gauge called a uh, Durometer that you can actually uh, uh, push, you can detect the hardness. And so let's say we, we uh, you know, we have an assembly line making automobile tires, and and, and uh, at 8:30 we pull th three tires off. The, uh, well, we pull four tires off the assembly line, and we measure what the hardness is. Uh, we compute the sum of these of the numbers x1 through x4, 
Uh, we divide by four, we get the average. The range value comes from the fact we look at the biggest number minus the smallest number. So 55 minus 51, that's four. Now let's go to, you know, the next hour, we pull four more tires off the assembly and we do exactly the same thing. And we repeat this process for every hour on the hour for ever how many samples we want to take. Uh, and here on the, the X bar chart, we plot the X, the average X values. And on the range chart, we plot the, the ranges. So here we plotted four for the R value and 52.8 for the X value. Uh, and the next hour, we plotted the, the next set of dot and we plotted the, the, sub, the seven up, up to here. Right, and we continue plotting these out and uh, examine our, our X bar and R chart. Now, of course, Minitab is going to plot all this for us. We don't, we don't really have to hand plot this stuff anymore. Uh, thank goodness. So let's take a look at an example here. Let's, uh, let's say we have, uh, uh, you know, we have a situation where we have, uh, uh, you know, 10, uh, 10 subgroups. We have, we, you know, we're going to take 10, 10 measurements off the assembly line. Uh, this particular example doesn't really say what these are, but, you know, it, it could be, this could be uh, inches or, or, or some kind of measurement we're taking. Uh, so we take three, three, three tires, let's say. Uh, you know, and so get the X bar average. We, we, seven plus four is 11 plus, plus four, 15 divided by three is five. That gets our X bar average. Uh, the range value simply is, is uh, the biggest number minus the smallest number. So that's three in this case. And we repeat this process for every, so maybe this was taken at 930. This is taken at 1030. We repeat this process for every, every possible one of these. Now the beauty about Minitab and why I love it so much is that Minitab will, will calculate the X bar and the R values for us. We don't really have to do have to do that um, per se, you know. So, so here, you know, we can go in uh, once we have these values ca calculated. Uh, we can ca calculate the X X bar bar. That's going to be their center line. That's simply the average of the averages. So we take the X bar uh, column and we, and we add these numbers up and we divide by by 10. We get 7.7. .7. Uh, the R average value, we find the same way. We take the range values, we add them up, divide by the number there are, which is 10, we get 3.7. So if you're going to use the tables to figure out what the upper control limit and the lower control limit are, uh, we need to find what the values are in our, our chart. So here we, we go back to the appendix and we look down through our sample size and we, in our samples, we, we selected three objects off the assembly line. So that's where the subgroup sample is, is, is three. So, so every hour on the hour, we selected three, three samples off the assembly line. So that's, that's where the three comes from. So we come over and we get the A2 factor here, uh, 1.0223. Uh, so it's, it's X bar bar, which is 7.7, uh, X bar bar plus A2 times R, the R, R bar, 11.5. We repeat this process for the lower control limit for the X bar, and, and we repeat this process for the for the R char, R, R charts. Um, notice this one's zero because uh, D3 here is uh, it, it, it's zero. These were blanked out, which means they're zero. So we go and we can plot we can plot these values. Uh, here's our X bar chart plotted. You see our center line. Uh, we see our upper control limit, lower control limit. Um, and so this, this again is produced by, by, uh, I don't know if this exact data is produced in Minitab, but, but Minitab will produce these exact, looking exactly the same. Um, so this is a, you know, here's our, here's our, our, our subgroups over, uh, down at the bottom, right? So this is the first sample we took, subgroup one, and the last subgroup we took was 10, 10 down here, uh, for the, uh, the values. So, you know, once we have our, our charts plotted, uh, the next question we ask is, okay, how do we interpret this? You know, we, we, it's, we understand how to plot, plot these values. How do we interpret what these values mean? And we'll take a look at that in the next lecture.